So now we're going to even expand on this moving baseline concept. We're going to we're going to extend it even further, and that that gets into a tricky chord progression where we're going to deal with a one five, and then another one five, and then we're going to go to the four chord back to the one chord and the five chord. So that's all kind of confusing to remember. But when you see how the chord progression comes together in the moving bass line, which is just an extension of what we just did in the previous chapter, you'll see that it actually makes a lot of sense. So our one chord, we're gonna stick in the key of C for now. Then we're gonna go to our five chord, but we're gonna move with the bass. So we're gonna do a G over B again. So my bass line's gone from C to B. Now we're going to go to A minor. So actually we're using the six chord instead of the one here. So that's going to be our relative minor, the six. A minor in the key of C. Now I'm going to hint a chord change to G by taking my pinky and just playing the note G. So it's an A minor with a G in the bass. Similar to playing a C with a G in the bass but we're playing an A minor with a G in the bass. Then I'm going to go to F. Then I'm going to go to C, but I'm going to play E in the bass. And then for the turnaround here, I'll go to D and then to G. And that may change depending on the songs. The turnarounds may be different. But the important thing here is my one chord, C, my five chord, but with the B in the bass, G with the B in the bass. My minor six chord here. My minor six with a G in the bass. It's kind of hinting at the five chord there. Then F, which is my four chord. And I'm, I'm throwing the low F here with my thumb in order to keep that bass line moving. C with an open E in the bass. And then D and G. So my bass line is C, B, A, G, F, E, and then for the turnaround I'm leaving it and going with probably a D and a G, certainly winding up on the five chord. Um, where has this been used? Sing us a song, you're the piano man. Sing us a song tonight. Well, we're all in the mood for a melody feeling all right or I could do whenever I see your smiling face I have to smile myself now he James Taylor does a little bit of a change there but that first sequence is the same whenever I see your smiling face compared to nine o'clock on a Saturday or how about this would you know my name if I saw you in heaven so there are a bunch of songs that share this idea. We could do it in a different key, in which case our one chord would be D. Then when we go to our five, A, we're gonna throw that C sharp in there. So we have that movement from D to C sharp. And I'm gonna go to a B minor. Then I gotta get an A in the bass to keep my movement going. And I'm just gonna relax my first finger and take it off. Why not? And I'm gonna go to a G chord. So my A has now gone down to G. Then I'm going to go to D chord, back to my one chord, but I'm going to hook my thumb over to keep that bass line going and play an F sharp on the second fret of the sixth string. And then maybe I'd go to an E chord and back to an A. It's nine o'clock on a Saturday. Or, um, would you know my name? Or I could slow it down a little bit and do uh, Sowing the Seeds of Love. Sowing the seeds of love, seeds of love. That's kind of nice. Maybe speed it up again. Hello, hello. I don't know why you say goodbye. I say hello. Or um, I could go back to C, back to the key of C and have that nice descending bass line that we did and do an old classic and finger pick it actually check this out if i do a little bit of finger picking dust in the wind i 
And all I'm really doing is I'm playing my descending bass line with my thumb. And back up to the A. So I'm doing C, B, A, hanging out there, and then going to G, F, and then back up to A, because that's the chord progression of the song. Starting with my C major chord, kind of ending on my A minor there. And then with my fingers, I'm just kind of randomly selecting the rest of the chord. No, no real science to it, other than that what my ear is telling me is that the root notes, the downbeats want to be low, and then the filler are going to be the higher pitch notes. So I might have, um, close my eyes, only for a moment and the moment's gone. So that gives you a sense of how you can extend the bass lines and how you can change the chords around just a little bit in order to create that movement that really gives continuity to a chord progression and really gives a whole new flavor, even though you're sticking within a similar chord progression to many other songs. <laughs>